guys, welcome back to my channel. So, notice anything different? I'm sitting in a different section of my room and I hope this looks okay. I'm kind of weirded out because I'm so used to sitting where I've been sitting for the past four and a half years. But I thought it was going to be very overwhelming to film this video because there are just so many products that I loved in 2015, but I tried to narrow them down. I'm going to be going in order in the way that I apply my makeup, so hopefully I stay organized. In 2015, I tried a lot of products, different brands, different types of makeup, and I also freelanced a lot more. So I really got to find out what I really, really like and what's just like eh, or some products I may have left behind but I rediscovered. So these are just the standout products, products that I use pretty much on an everyday basis if I am going for a full face. Primers are so important to me. I am obsessed with shrinking my pores and making them look invisible. I'm all about that poreless look. I am obsessed with looking how I look on camera in person. I don't like my makeup to look cakey so I'm a huge primer collector. First primer that came to mind when I thought about 2015 was the Benefit Professional. I probably went through two or three of these in 2015. I like this one because it's oil free, it's lightweight, pretty basic. I just always always have to use a pore minimizing primer before I apply my foundations. I know not everyone's a fan of this one but I personally loved it in 2015. And the other primer that I really liked in 2015 was for my drier days and it is the MAC Prep and Prime Natural Radiance Base. This primer is very hydrating which I love because I have normal to dry skin. I really like this one all over my face, especially when using a full coverage foundation. It just preps my skin. Not only does my skin feel refreshed, but it looks hydrated, it looks refreshed, and it just makes for a really good base. And I think I also went through two of these bottles in 2015 because I love this. I love using it on my clients. It's just a really nice base. Last but not least, I want to talk about the Dr. Brandt Pores No More. This has been my holy, holy girl primer. I use this when I'm not wearing makeup. When I'm wearing makeup, I use it on my clients. I'm obsessed with this. This is by far the best primer when it comes to minimizing the appearance of my pores. I'm never satisfied with my foundation if I don't use this because I feel like I can just see the pores on my nose. I've been trying to be really good about my skincare, but sometimes I forget to use a mask for the week. And sometimes my pores can look really full when I have foundation on, especially like an all matte foundation. So using this definitely helps if you're not up on your skincare regimen. Flawless, flawless, flawless in person, in pictures. I can't say enough good things about this. It's my favorite primer. I use this every day. It can tend to make you look a little flaky if you don't prep your skin like lotion and oils and things like that. So be careful if you're using this and you have dry skin and you love matte foundations because I really have been loving matte foundations. Don't ask me why, but... I still use this. I use this every single time I do my makeup and I'm obsessed. Next, let's talk about concealers. The first concealer that I want to talk about is one that I was loving in 2015, especially towards the beginning. I feel like the first six months, this is all that I wore. And it's the Maybelline Fit Me Concealer in the color Sand. This concealer I've gone through more than three tubes of in 2015 and I just feel like it's very lightweight. It's perfect for every day. You don't feel bad about using it because it's drugstore and it's like $6. So that one doesn't cake up underneath the eyes. The shades are also a very yellow tone, which I really like. And the second concealer that I want to talk about is the Urban Decay Naked skin this is another holy grail for me like I don't know what to do without this I either use this one which is light neutral or the warm light one this one I like because it's lightweight it doesn't really cake up I just really love this also it doesn't crease as fast so I can do my concealer move on to something else like cream contour or do like a liquid highlight and then bake or then powder my under eyes and it's not creasing as much as another one would I also really like the Mac Pro Longwear in 2015 I didn't bring it out here but I really liked it. It's super full coverage. This one's a little bit less coverage. It's like a medium coverage where MAC Pro Longwear is full coverage and a bit more drying. I feel like this one is just a bit more hydrating. I'm also wearing this right now under my eyes and I love it, love it, love it. Cannot say enough good things about this one. I'm sorry in advance for all of the noise in my house. Coco is going crazy right now and there's also construction going on outside. What a joy. These two foundations that I'm about to talk about were like my ride or die foundations in the beginning of 2015. I was really into that luminous, and lightweight foundation. So the first one is the YSL Le Taint Touche Clot Foundation and I usually use the shade BD50 or B50 and then also the Lancome Taint Miracle in the shade Bisque 4W. So these two foundations are great for dry skin. I wore these foundations a lot. I've gone through two bottles of each which says a lot. I love those two foundations for a really dewy healthy look like a no makeup makeup 
But the next two foundations that I'm gonna talk about are a little bit more mattifying and more of what I've been into as of lately. The first one is the Estee Lauder Double Wear Foundation. This foundation is so popular. It is the holy grail for so many people. It's medium to full coverage. It just lasts all day. It has a really, really long, 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 long wear, which I really like. And they have really, really good colors. So Estee Lauder Double Wear definitely wore this one a lot in 2015. I like wearing this foundation when I'm going for a full coverage foundation. If I'm going out to an event, I'll usually wear this one, the Estee Lauder Double Wear. Or my next favorite, which has been my favorite for the past three months, I want to say. Like, I've been using this non-stop. It's what I have on right now. And it's the L'Oreal Invaluable Pro Matte 24 Hour Foundation. Oh, and in the Estee Lauder Double Wear, I usually wear rattan. Dawn or Tawny depending on what shade I am like right now. I'm Dawn or Rattan and then in the L'Oreal Infallible I use 105 natural beige, which again is what I have on right now I am so in love with this foundation. I cannot say enough good things about it I got this at Rite Aid. It was like $10.99. I always get them on sale. I use this in my kits I am so obsessed like I can't say enough good things about it because it's just so amazing It says it has a demi matte finish, but I think it's a pretty matte finish Again, medium to full coverage. This foundation doesn't budge. I wear this also when I go out to events. I feel like these two are pretty, pretty close. I feel like this one's a little thicker and not as drying on my face. You'll have to try this one out for yourself to know the miracles of this foundation. Every time I wear this foundation, I get compliments from everybody and their mama, either on YouTube or in person. Everyone loves this, and I'm telling you, it's good stuff. You have to try it, and it's drugstore, so... To say that my favorite foundation is drugstore is remarkable because you guys know I love collecting high-end makeup, but that one does me justice every single time I wear it, so it's like foolproof to me. Next, I want to talk about a finishing powder, and of course, you already know, La Mercier Translucent Powder. This was also my jam in 2015. I love, 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 love this stuff. I loved it then. I love it now. It can be a little drying for those who have dry skin. I will admit that. I've been using a new one, too as of lately, but I don't want to talk about new products because that's going to be my January favorites, but this one is just a great setting powder. If you're really oily, you need this in your life. If you like to bake underneath your eyes, you need this in your life. I'm going to do a baking video very soon, like probably in my next five videos. You're going to see how I bake and how I set with this powder. Can't really say much about this. It's just a really good setting powder. I love it underneath my eyes. I love it all over. I love it as a finishing powder. I love it before I apply my bronzer, just so my bronzer applies smoothly, it's just really, really good. Sticking with face products, I want to talk about my favorite bronzers of 2015. First one that comes to mind is definitely the Smashbox Bronzer in Suntan Matte. I haven't been able to find one. I feel like they just carry them in the weirdest places. I love this stuff, clearly. I probably would have gone through the whole thing already, but because it was discontinued, I don't want to use it. I love this bronzer. It's so creamy. It's so nice. The new bronzer that Smashbox makes doesn't compare to this one. I love how simple and slim this is. The color is great. The consistency is great. The wear is also great. So I love this. If you can find this, please mail one to me. I will pay you. I'm obsessed with this. And yeah, can't say enough good things. I love it, love it, love it. Next up for a bronzer, you guys already know, MAC Give Me Sun. This is my second one. 2015 was a year of orange Oompa Loompa rose and I'm sorry but I just love to be warm and I love warm colors on my skin tone. You already know this is my homie if you watch any of my videos. No matter what bronzer I use I always top it off with this one. Like I can use Bobbi Brown, I could use NYX, I'll use any bronzer but I always 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 use this. Nothing else compares to this. I've bought other warm orangey bronzers. Nothing compares to Give Me Sun. I always finish off my bronzer with this one. Always. It's like the perfect topping. For me. In 2015, I discovered my love for MAC blushes. Seriously was obsessed with MAC blushes and I still am. I have probably like 8 or 9 blushes from MAC. I know not everyone's crazy about their blushes, but I am. I just picked up two that I really, really like and that I use with almost every single look. Here we have Warm Soul and here we have Peaches. Warm Soul gives you a really nice, natural, glowy, rosy cheek. Peach is just a really nice peach, warm blush. I have huge dents in both of these. I haven't hit pan, but there's like a big dent in this one. If you're into rosy, pinky colors, Melba was one of my favorites too. I also forgot to bring out Milani Luminoso. That was one of my favorites in 2015. Lamasco Blush in Lover. One of you guys actually put me onto it, and that makes me so much happier, like knowing that 
a suggestion that you guys made like I bought it right away because every time you guys tell me to buy something and I don't have it I buy it because I trust you guys I'm obsessed with this color I have it on right now it's just the perfect peachy color lover is just a little lighter and I feel like it just looks a lot more natural on the cheeks sometimes peaches could look a little too peachy on my cheeks lover has just been my everyday blush I love this when I'm doing dramatic looks when I'm doing natural looks it's just amazing I love this one if you haven't tried an Illamasqua blush you need to the next subject is probably what I'm most known for and it is highlights I love so many highlights but I narrowed it down to four first one is the Becca champagne pop highlights I love opal I love moonstone I love pearl all of the Becca shimmering skin perfectors are really really nice depending on what brush you use and depending on your skin so if your skin is really dry that day I feel like the Becca shimmering skin perfectors aren't gonna show up as like luminous and glowy but a little trick that I have is you spray your brush with fix plus and then apply your highlight girl you're welcome I love champagne pop this is in collaboration with Jaclyn Hill I actually have on champagne pop right now my opal broke so that's very depressing but the next highlight that I want to talk about is Laura Geller gilded honey I'm almost hitting pan on this one and I use it every single time that I want like a really golden luminous glow. I love using this on my clients as well. I love this on medium, tan, or darker skin complexions. It's just the perfect golden color and you can't go wrong with a nice golden highlight. The next highlight isn't actually a highlight, but I used the crap out of this one in 2015. This one seriously gives me that like wham bam highlight, but I don't talk about it much because it was also I think discontinued and I don't like to talk about something you guys can't get. It is the Kiko Shadow in 208. Mine is super, super busted, but I love this as a highlight. It's an eyeshadow, but girl, as a highlight, this stuff will have you blinging. I used it when I was in LA, and me and Angie were using it one day, and we took a picture, and seriously, the shine was just like bouncing off the walls, hitting us back on the face. Like, it was insane, but I love this. It's really hard to get. If you could find this, please, please, please buy it for me, and I will pay you. I am obsessed with this. I can't find it. I've gone to like every Kiko standing store. Mine broke and fell, so I don't want to use it because I feel like it's just like crumbling. The next highlight I hear nobody talk about. It is super underrated. I feel like I'm the only one who owns this. It is the Mirabella Highlighting Powder in Swirling Pearl. I am so obsessed with this. I also have this on my cheeks right now. I know I have like three highlights on, but that's okay. What I love the most about it is its consistency. It is just the smoothest highlight that I own. Sometimes I'll wear like the Anastasia So Hollywood and it'll just kind of accentuate any problem areas that I have, any patchiness or dryness or just trouble spots on my cheeks. And if I apply this on top, it kind of just smooths everything out. I feel like it's the best smoothing highlight. And it also shines bright like a diamond. Like, I love this stuff. I remember this being a little pricey. I got it on Holt Look, but I'm seriously considering going online and buying all of them because that's how good this is. I should use this more in my videos. I don't know why I don't. But off camera, I'm always using this. And it's pretty much almost done, so I need a backup ASAP. You guys already know that the Beauty Blender is my favorite way to apply my foundation. So I don't have to say much about this because... If you watched any of my videos, you already know Beauty Blender is life. Fleeky brows were definitely a staple for 2015. I feel like the pressure was definitely on to have really, really nice, perfected brows. In the beginning of the year, Anastasia Brow Wiz in Soft Brown, Taupe, and Caramel were my favorite. They were just my jam. I love this because it has a really skinny pencil. It comes to a nice tip, so you get those really nice, defined brows. But towards the end of the year I discovered this guy which is the hourglass brow sculpting pencil and I am so obsessed with this pencil I have it on right now I actually have both of these on right now I put like a hundred products on my brows today but sometimes you gotta do what you gotta do to get them brows but hourglass pencil girl it is life I'm gonna do a whole video on it you guys see me use it every time when I do a get ready with me and I just love the way it just makes my brows look really natural, really defined, really full because that's what I look for in a pencil. I want my brows to look full, not that defined, but full because I could just define them with concealer but a brow that can make it look like I have more hair than I do, it won me over. So I still use my Anastasia but the hourglass, mmm, honey boo boo cha. Never saying that again. As for liquid liner, I feel like in 2015 I used a lot of different liquid liners. I used the balm, I used L'Oreal. I really like the L'Oreal one, but they don't have that one anymore. The two that stood out to me the most were the NYC liquid liner, which is like $3, and then on the other side of the spectrum is the Tom Ford eye definer. These are the complete opposites when it comes to price, 
but I love them both. My eyeliner has been a lot more sharp and more precise and just black and just dark and intense and it's all thanks to this baby. It is so amazing. It's so expensive. Yes, it is so expensive, but it is seriously worth every single penny. I'm gonna buy another one as soon as this one dries out, which it hasn't. I got this in, I think, October. Still hasn't dried out, even though outside has been brutally cold. I brought it with me to Florida. I use it every single time I do my wing liner and nothing has happened to it. This is double-sided, so I feel like you get double bang for your buck. It's really, really long, so you get a lot of product. I remember seeing a girl, I forgot who it was, but she did her wing liner on Instagram using this and I just went out and bought it that same weekend because I was like, I need that sharp wing in my life. I feel like this needs a whole video on its own, so I will do that for you guys. Make sure if you're getting the NYC one, you get the black and not the pearlized black because it makes a huge difference. This one is just so black and so intense and it just doesn't budge. What I like to do is put this one on and then I'll put my lashes and then just to kind of hide the bands, I'll use this one because it's a bit more creamy and just like a thicker consistency. This is a felt, this is a brush, so I like to use a brush to just intensify the line and go over the lash band. I really like this combo, it is amazing. One's really low end, one is really high end. Together they're just a match made in heaven. I'm telling you guys, if you want sharp wings, you gotta just, you gotta do this, you gotta do it. Next up, I wanna talk about this little guy, and it's a Tarina Tarantino eyeliner in Tommy Jets. This thing is so black. I feel like this is the only one that I went back to all year, 2015. Even if I'm going for a natural look or a more dramatic look, I always tight line. So I apply eyeliner like in the upper rim of my upper lash line. This one is so black, it doesn't budge, it doesn't get underneath in my waterline. Serena Tarantino used to be carried in Sephora, but they took it out, so whenever they're on hold look, I always pick myself up one of these. Next up, we're going to talk about mascaras, and I mainly use false lashes. You guys always see me wearing fake lashes, but I do love mascara on an everyday basis when I'm not wearing lashes and when I'm not filming. I love to make my lashes look really long, and my favorite was definitely L'Oreal Telescopic Carbon Black. I must admit, I went back to this because of Carly, because her lashes always look so bomb, and I really love this. It's waterproof, it's black, I can use it on my bottom lashes, no problem, doesn't smudge, doesn't smear. My top lashes, this makes them look so long and so defined. I feel like you can't really ask much more in a mascara. It's not marketed as waterproof. They do have a waterproof one and I don't like that one, but this one, bomb. The next mascara that I loved is the MAC Extended Play Giga Black Mascara. I love this for my bottom lashes. I use it almost every single time in a video when I'm doing my bottom lashes. I either use one of these on the bottom. This one gives me a lot of definition on the bottom lashes and just really defines them. This mascara makes sure that my bottom lashes do not smudge or smear at all. Sometimes this one can do a little bit if I'm a little sweaty, but this one doesn't go anywhere. Next up, I want to talk about a brow gel. Now in 2015, I really, really liked the dip brow, and I just felt like I couldn't find my shade. They were either too dark or too intense, and I just, I was happy with it, but... Then I found this one. This is the Brow Liner Gel number 19. I love that this defines my brows and helps them stay in place, but it doesn't make them look too harsh or too scary. I love applying this just on the tails of my brows and on the outlines using the Zoeva Wing Liner Brush. You guys already know. That's my jam. You guys know I love light brows, but when I'm doing a full face, especially with lashes, I like to just apply some to the tail of my brows so that they look cohesive to my face. They don't look like they're just too light for my face, so I love that stuff. As far as an eye base, the MAC Paint Pots were definitely my favorite in 2015. I feel like these are just amazing. The Paint Pots are great for concealing any discoloration that you may have on your eyelids. They also make my shadows last a bit longer, and I just really like that they neutralize my eyelids. I love the shade Soft Ochre. I also really liked Painterly in 2015, but lately I've just been using Soft Ochre because it's a bit more yellow-toned where painterly is a bit more neutral. Everyone uses this. I feel like if you own eyeshadow, you probably own this. And if you don't, you need to get on it because it definitely makes a difference, trust me. I rarely apply eyeshadow just straight to my eyelid. I always have to have something in between, like a barrier. I feel like everyone, their mama, also used this in 2015, but it's just really good stuff. There are so many eyeshadows that I love, but I tried to narrow it down as much as I could. The first two shadows are single shadows. The first one is Bobbi Brown Toast. In 2015, I made a huge dent in this baby. I love it. I love the consistency. I love the color. It's the perfect transition color for my skin tone. This is gonna change your makeup game. You need a transition color. You need a transition color. Like, I can't say that enough. I'm telling you, pause this video and go get yourself a transition color. I love the Bobbi Brown shadows in general, but this color is just like my go-to. This one just makes your shadow blend a lot easier, makes everything a lot more seamless. If you just want to buy one shadow, try this one out. 
I promise you, you will get a lot of use out of Toast. It's amazing. The next shadow that I loved in 2015 is NARS Galapagos. What was I doing before this? I don't know. I love this shadow. My friend Marie actually bought this for me and I am so obsessed. It's a brown shade, but it has a whole bunch of like gold flecks of glitter. I have this on right now underneath the eyes. It's the perfect smoking out color. This is going to give you that sparkle in your eye twinkle that you want everyone to notice. I'm telling you, it just, it's bomb. This one has a transition color and like all over in the crease. This one defines in the crease and underneath. Easiest eye look you could ever do. Next up, we have palettes. I'm going to try to speed through this. The first palette that I abused in 2015 was definitely the Lorac Pro palette. I feel like I don't show this one much love anymore, but you get a whole row of matte shadows and then a whole row of shimmery shadows. I hit major pan on the mattes. I'm not crazy about these shimmer shadows, but Lorac makes great matte shadows. I feel like it's hard to find palettes with mirrors these days, which I don't know why that is, but this one is super slim, has a mirror, compact, you have mattes, you have shimmers. You can't go wrong with Lorac Pro. I feel like I have to show this one more love. Next up are the Too Faced Chocolate Bar palettes. I was so obsessed, and I still am obsessed with these shadows. So I have the original Chocolate Bar, and then I have these Semi Sweets. I love these shadows. They smell like chocolate. They're super buttery soft. They have great mattes, great nice neutral browns for the crease and you guys know I'm a sucker for crease colors. I can't let these go ever because I use these on like my first clients. The semi sweet has a lot of browns and a lot of warm mattes and some shimmery colors and then the original one has like my favorite brown shade ever which is called salted caramel and then the pink color next to it is heaven. I love having mirrors in my palette and these have them so just makes it a lot more convenient for traveling. The next shadows I didn't really talk about much on my channel but I used a lot off camera and it is the Melt Cosmetics Dark Matter Stack. They call them a stack but it's weird because I want to call it a palette, I want to call it a quad. You get four amazing shadows. This stack is so underrated. This color Blur, amazing as a crease color. So you get this one which is called Blur, this one which is called Unseen, Enigma, and Dark Matter. I currently have these two shadows on right now. I love Blur because it literally just like blurs your eyeshadow. If you use a dark brown in your crease and you feel like, oh my god, I can't blend this, like it's really hard to blend. Using this one, Blur, is amazing. It'll just blend everything out. These are just so buttery, so soft, so creamy. You can blend these out like a dream. If you're using an eyeshadow that doesn't blend that well, use a little bit of this, and I'm telling you, your eyeshadow is just going to look so seamless and just amazing. I love the packaging too. It's really compact, perfect for your makeup bag, and then you do get a little mirror too. So It is kind of pricey, but I definitely want to pick up the other stack. I don't really use these in my videos as much. I don't know why, but off camera, I'm loving these. The last eyeshadows that I want to talk about are in this palette that I like custom made. Some of them are MAC, some of them are Makeup Geek, and then some of them are Anastasia. Anastasia shadows are probably one of my favorites. So the first two rows are Anastasia, and then this row is MAC, and then this one is Makeup Geek. I will gladly record a video talking about each shadow that's in here, but just know that Anastasia shadows, Makeup Geek shadows, and MAC shadows are definitely in every single look that I do off camera because I feel like when I'm filming, I'm like so pressured and there's like a time restraint and I'm like so all over the place that I don't really get to use like my favorite things. But off camera, when I have like the time and the luxury to do my makeup and peace, I always, 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 always use these. For the inner portion of my eye, I love MAC Nylon. I love Makeup Geek Magic Act. It's a great gold color for all over the lid. I love Anastasia Blanc on my brow bone. I also love Peach Smoothie by Makeup Geek. Thumbs up this video if you'd like to see a video talking all about these shadows and swatching them and why they're my favorite and all that jazz. Let me know. And the last palette that I want to talk about is the Kat Von D shade light palette. I feel like every single person and their mama also talks about this. The name's rubbed off in the back, but clearly I love this middle shade, which is like a banana shade. I also love the shade right underneath as a contour color. I love this. You can bronze and contour with it, which is amazing. Very hard to find a palette that you can contour and bronze, aside from the Too Faced Cocoa Contour. Love that stuff too. I actually use that today. But I feel like in 2015, this one is the one that I reach for the most. I also heard that they're coming out with a version of this that actually has like magnetic inserts. So you can just repurchase that banana shade like me. I love all Kat Von D products except for her new blushes. I tried one I was just like, eh. I feel like Kat Von D is just so bomb and she's so dope. She did a great job on this palette and I love it. In 2015, I loved MAC lipsticks. I have two here, which are probably my favorites of all time. The first one is called Modesty. 
Modesty is just a great everyday color. It's just the perfect nude. It doesn't look too light and it's not too dark. It's just amazing. This is Modesty and this is Honey Love. I love both of them. Modesty is just a little bit easier to wear because it is a bit darker. And then Honey Love is a little bit lighter. I feel like it's Modesty plus Myth in one lipstick. In 2015, I also loved and abused MAC Myth and MAC Blankety. I'm still a sucker for MAC lipsticks. Sorry, not sorry. Last but not least, I want to talk about the lip combo that I've been wearing ever since I discovered it. And it is MAC Soar Lip Liner, Galactic Bashful Liquid Lipstick, and Anastasia Pure Hollywood. What I have on right now, Soar is just the perfect rosy color. It's perfect for overlining your lips a bit. And just really defining them and making them look pouty and juicy and amazing. Galactic Bashful, where was I before this? It's really hard for me to fall in love with a liquid lipstick that's a nude because I feel like the colors are just always off. Hands down, Galactic Bashful is probably my most used liquid lipstick. I'm surprised I didn't go through this bottle because I use this every time I want to go for a liquid lipstick that's nude. And to lighten it up a little bit, I love applying Pure Hollywood by Anastasia right on top. This is my third bottle of Pure Hollywood. I love this on top of any other nude because I just feel like it lightens it up and it gives it just a really nice plump look. When I use these two in combination, I feel like my lips do get a bit dry, but I always apply the Tatcha lip balm on top and that definitely just saves them and makes them look a lot better. So love those. And last but not least, I want to talk about some setting sprays. I'm going to go through these really quickly. MAC Fix Plus, amazing. I love this on days where I'm feeling a little cakey or a little powdery because this is just going to like mend all the powders together. This will diminish that powdery cakey look that you might have with powder foundations or just foundations in general. I love that when I'm feeling a little cakey or I just need like a pick-me-up in the summer if I'm really hot. I use it on my hair, I use it on my face. I love Fix Plus also for my eyeshadows and my highlights so that they can really stand out and pop. And then the Pixi Makeup Fixing Spray. This one was a late love of mine in 2015 but I've already gone through two of these. It just makes my makeup look very flawless in person and just really airbrushed. So I really really like this. You can find this at Target. It's really inexpensive. This one actually like mends the powders, but also makes you look really flawless. Fix Plus I like when I'm feeling powdery, but this one actually has pore tightening properties, so I feel like it actually makes my makeup look more flawless. And then last but not least, the Tatcha Dewy Skin Spray. They now sell this on Sephora online. This one in particular is a must-have if you like dewy skin, if you like your highlights of bling, you could just apply it on the highlighted areas of your face, and instantly you look a lot more refreshed, a lot dewier, a lot healthier. I love this when I'm not wearing makeup and when I am wearing makeup. It just makes me look really healthy and luminous and glowy and dewy, which are all things that I like because I'm all about that dewy life. I actually lied. I have two more products to share with you, and they're both lashes. My favorite lashes of 2015, hands, 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 hands down, are the ones that I'm wearing right now, and they are Iconics by House of Lashes. This is me in a box. I love House of Lashes Iconics. Every time I wear them, which I don't wear them as often anymore because I like to wear them for like special occasions like 2015 favorites video, hello. I love that these are spiky but still wearable. I wanna buy like 100 of these because I feel like they're the most flattering on my eyes. I feel like the Iconics just suit my eyes really, really well and my face and they just really play up my eyes and I love that. But I know not everyone's a fan. I've tried them on clients and even one of my best friends, Angie, she's tried them and she hated them. So I feel like it just depends on your eye shape and your face. I also fell in love with Lily Lashes in 2015. I have every single style of Lily Lashes and my favorites are Mykonos and Miami and Kuwait. I love Lily Lashes because they're so unique. They have so many different styles. They're mink lashes so you can use them over and over and over again if you take care of them. They're just so hairy and furry and I know every time I say that you guys laugh at me but it's true like they just look so full and I feel like I really like that especially for YouTube because you can be wearing some Demi Wispies and the camera is not going to pick them up. My camera never picks up like baby lashes anymore so I just go with mink or iconics. I love House of Lashes, I love Coco Lashes, and I really, really love Lily Lashes. You can't go wrong with Mykonos unless you are not used to wearing full lashes. Definitely pick yourself up some Lily Lashes. You will not regret it. I know they're pricey, but you won't regret it. And the House of Lashes are $10 if you buy the bundle of three. I'll still be filming a January favorites video probably next week, so be on the lookout for that one. But I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I know it was a long one. Thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one. Bye, guys. It's hot. It's the consistent. What I love the most about it, it's the cons. That lisp is coming out, girl.
thank you so much. Um, yeah, I am burning hot. Oh my god. Yeah. Woo! I think I the chemicals. It is so hot in here. Actually, I need some right now. It's hot. Oh my god, but I'm dying. Right there. Yum. I hate when my straw breaks in the middle and then I have to just like hold it. Why can't I drink my Snapple and bees? Watches and things like that. Oh. Oh. It was just loose. Notice I didn't have an ice milk latte. You notice? With a little bit of like a pop of pink or brown or no, can be a pop of pink or brown. Mm. I just love these. I love these. Oh, mm. they're upside down. Focus. And I hope you had some snacks because it was very long. Very long. <laughs>